Exercises and ergonomics for the pregnant surgeon. Pain in pregnancy is common, particularly low back and pelvic pain. In recent surveys of surgeons, a significant majority reported worsening of musculoskeletal disorders in pregnancy. In one cohort, over 13% of surgeons reported unplanned absences due to pain. Current recommendations for surgeons focus on limiting heavy lifting, long hours, and prolonged standing, but specific ergonomic recommendations during pregnancy are limited. Exercise of any type has shown benefit in decreasing severity and potentially preventing some of the common pain disorders of pregnancy. The objective of this video is to provide widely applicable exercises and ergonomic adjustments to aid pregnant surgeons in minimizing pain and discomfort while operating. The primary focus of the selected exercises is to provide pelvic and abdominal support that can translate to many OR settings and surgical modalities. The transversus abdominis is the deepest layer of pelvic and abdominal support. Developing this muscle group provides an essential base for further core strengthening. The transversus abdominis can most easily be identified and engaged by performing a maximal exhale. This exercise can be incorporated into normal activity or other focused exercises. The engagement and effect on the pregnant abdomen can be seen in the video. The first group of exercises focuses on general core strength and overall support. Resistance bands are used as they are easily accessible and can be adjusted for each individual. In anti-rotation press, lateral resistance is applied with an exercise band. Knees are slightly bent and the trunk is engaged to resist rotation as the arms reach forward. In hip extension, the trunk remains tight and the hips level while the leg is extended posteriorly. The foot should remain off the ground through the set. Hip abduction should be started with hands under the shoulders and knees under the feet. The active leg is lifted laterally and the knee turned out with the feet remaining close together. The core should remain engaged and the hips should not rotate or dip to either side. These and the following exercises can be implemented early in pregnancy to build strength that can be carried into the third trimester. The second group of exercises also provides general pelvic and abdominal support with additional focus on posterior chain muscles such as the hamstrings and glutes. Kettlebell carry is initiated by bending at the hips and knees, maintaining a straight back. The kettlebell is grasped and weight is transferred into the heels to push up to standing. Upright posture with relaxed shoulders is maintained while walking a set distance. This is repeated bilaterally. Goblet squats begin with knees slightly wider than shoulder width. The knees are bent to about 90 degrees. The back remains straight and the knees remain behind the toes. Deadlift begins in a similar position. The kettlebell is grasped by bending at the hips. The glutes and hamstrings are engaged and the weight is lifted off the ground. A slight knee bend is incorporated to maintain a straight back and ensure posterior muscle engagement. Standing or sitting further from the patient in any surgery modality becomes more common as pregnancy progresses, requiring more forward-reaching motions. Improving upper extremity strength helps to support this functional change, as well as increasing upper body support while seated at a robotic console. Bicep curls start with palms facing forward. Resistance bands or dumbbells can be used depending on what is available. The back should remain straight and the shoulders relaxed. Standing row is performed facing an anchored resistance band. Arms are pulled back toward the chest, squeezing together the shoulder blades and keeping the back straight. A raised plank is shown here as opposed to a floor plank as it's more feasible in later pregnancy. Forearms are placed on a table or other raised surface. The feet walk backwards until the body is extended and the core engages. This position is held for several seconds. The hips should remain in line with the body, abdomen tight and back straight with a gentle chin tuck. The transversus abdominis engagement can be incorporated into any of these exercises to provide additional core work. The exercises proposed here are generally recommended for three sets of 10 repetitions. While the optimal amount and frequency of exercise in pregnancy is unknown, previous studies of non-surgeons have identified improvement in pain with short regimens two to three times weekly. For this reason, current recommendations on frequency and length of exercise are flexible and may be dictated by the surgeon's schedule. We'll now go through some operating room changes that can enhance ergonomics for the pregnant surgeon. Prolonged periods of standing can lead to a locked knee stance that increases lower back strain. Most literature recommends avoiding standing for longer than three hours in the late third trimester. 
While adhering to this recommendation may be difficult for many surgeons, intermittent modifications in stance can prevent excessive low back strain and fatigue. A simple adjustment such as a stool can be enough to redistribute weight. The surgeon must take care to maintain a, a neutral pelvic posture regardless of foot position, not allowing the weight to shift entirely into either hip. The base of stance is wider in pregnancy with decreased balance as the third trimester progresses. Wider stools or platforms allow for a comfortable stance as well as improved safety. While various types of chairs have been studied for ergonomic purposes, they are not all applicable in late pregnancy. Front rest chairs may be implemented in early pregnancy, but they are limited by habitus in later months. Simple adjustments such as saddle stools or seat height are accessible and can be beneficial. Both interventions can improve ergonomics by altering hip and back angulation and shifting muscle activation into the lower extremities. The change in hip flexion with stool adjustment can be seen in these photos. The higher stool decreases the amount of flexion at the hip and allows the pelvis to tip slightly forward into a more neutral position. This adjustment shifts the activation of support muscles from the back to the core and legs. Extended instruments provide additional length when operating further from the patient. Forward reaching can be minimized and the upper arm brought back toward the trunk as shown in photos 1 and 2. Maintaining a neutral wrist posture is also important to minimize strain on the carpal tunnel. Carpal tunnel syndrome affects about a third of pregnant women, and grip strength has also been shown to decrease as pregnancy progresses. Utilizing locking instruments can minimize excessive grip application and abnormal wrist rotation, allowing the surgeon to reorient the wrist into a neutral position. When operating robotically, starting the ergonomic setup with seat height allows for the pelvic posture to dictate the remainder of the console settings. Upper extremity exercises, as previously described, enhance the arm and shoulder strength for extra support. Clutching the hand pieces closer to the armrest prevents excessive reaching. In summary, there is limited research on how surgical ergonomics affect pregnant surgeons. Exercise is one intervention that has been shown to be beneficial, and further research should focus on best practices and modifications for pregnant surgeons.